Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Vintage Story. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get your first backpack and armor upgrades, basic hunting and trapping techniques, how to repair clothing and armor, and how to insulate yourself against the cold. So let's take a step back for a moment. Resources. You're always going to need resources. This I talked about in the previous video, resin. You're going to want some of this for some of your early game gear. So be sure to mark it on your map in whatever way you find most appropriate so that you can come back and harvest it every now and again and not forget where it is. Don't forget, you don't need any special tools to harvest this. Just hold right click with an empty hand and you can get your resin. That being said, there are predators in the world like this wolf here that I have. Don't worry, it's just a bot. It's not going to attack me or anything. But there are ways to help offset some of the damage that these creatures can do to you, and that is by upgrading your armor. Remember before we made this, it's kind of like a, a swampy armor type here. It, it's called improvised body armor made from wood. It doesn't have much for durability, doesn't last very long either. Let's put that back on there. Over time, it'll get damaged, if not destroyed, because it doesn't have much durability. And the harder hitting creature or whatever that is going to be hitting you may do more durability damage than just one at a time, thus making this armor pretty much useless against higher damage tier enemies. That's where this other armor comes into play. You can see here we've got some clean stuff on the left and some slightly damaged stuff on the right. By grabbing these, I now have Lamellar armor. Now it does require a little bit of other items, but nothing that you shouldn't be too unfamiliar with. Resin is one of them for all three pieces of the armor. Another being firewood, and the last being some kind of pelt. Now it doesn't have to be a huge pelt. If you wait when you move your mouse icon off of this crafting grid, it will start cycling through the different sizes that you can have. Now, if it's too small, something like one of these small ones here, you might need multiples of it, but not to worry, you can still make that work. I recommend trying to go for a medium one, but you know, you never know what kind of creatures you're going to come across because it's just kind of random what you run into out in the world. But you're going to need this. Pelts. Basically, so you can make your lamellar armor as well as a few other things. By killing and harvesting certain creatures in the wild, you can take the hides from those and combine them with perhaps some lumps of fat that you might also get from those same creatures and then turn it into an oiled hide. You store that in your inventory or in another storage and let it cure for a certain amount of time. It, it, it may take days. In this case, 48 hours, it will cure into a regular pelt, which then can be used to make your armor as well as a few other upgrades. So there is a little bit of time investment in this, but not to worry, once you've made your lamellar armor, you can then repair it if it gets damaged over time, which is not quite like the previous level armor over here. Once it gets that low, it just kind of goes bye-bye. Now let's say that you have some of these ingredients. Don't worry, I'll go over a little bit more on the pelts and how you can actually obtain those momentarily, but first let's finish up with making this armor set. Once you've crafted it with the desired items, you can then don it to yourself to gain certain benefits. In this case, it's going to have more than double the amount of durability that your previous, uh, what I'm calling swamp armor, might have had. It also can reduce damage taken to you by a half a hit point per attack depending on the damage tier that is attacking you. If you notice, it says protection tier is zero. In this case, it's going to protect you against, well, light, wild creatures that aren't really going to have like a huge damage bonus to their attacks or anything like that. You're, you're probably going to just help reduce things from like drifters throwing stones at you, which is going to cut that damage right in half. But the percent protection is also going to be a 65%. So it's flat damage reduction of 0.5 hit points, and a percent protection of 65, if it meets the protection tier of just zero. If anything has a higher attack tier than this, it will pretty much cut through your armor, um, yeah, and do a lot more durability damage, and you're going to probably take full damage. But still, it's better than the previous swamp armor, and it's repairable with firewood. For example, you see some here. I've got some uh, lamellar armor here. If I put it in my crafting grid and I take a little bit of firewood, craft it up there, it would then repair that item. You see that the durability bar goes up from 135 to 185. It's just that simple in order for you to repair those. 
then you can put them back on. And yes, all you need to do is just right click them to equip them if you don't have any armor in your uh, armor slots already. But if you notice, my stats have all gone askew by wearing these pieces of armor because each one will definitely have a big positive and negative effect on your person. Mostly negative, but when it comes to protection, a big positive. If you notice here, they do reduce your healing effectiveness, which means whenever you use something like a poultice or whatnot, it will be 10% less effective. So if you're healing yourself for one point of health, you would only get 0.9 points of health. Uh, your hunger rate's going to increase, so you're going to get a little bit hungrier more often while wearing these. Your ranged weapon accuracy is going to go down slightly. It's a very small percentage. And your we ranged weapon charge time is an additional 7%. So it's going to take you a little bit longer to wind up the, uh, the ranged attacks, like pulling back a bow or uh, throwing a spear, something along those lines will be a little bit slower. And, of course, your walk speed is going to be a little slower, too. Depending on the armor that you choose, you might also get some different sounds that you might be making, uh, whether it be like a chain or a plate mail. Those could also make you really chunk around, but the, the wood stuff is pretty quiet. Now, these do stack, so the more pieces of armor you have, the more this is going to affect you. You notice my walk speed is now 91%, so the 3% reduction has hit times 3 because I'm wearing all 3 pieces. Removing one of those, it goes up that 3%. And if you do decide that you only can make one piece of armor, I highly recommend that you just put that piece on your body because it is most often targeted. Your feet and head are going to be secondary to that. Now that you look like a well-protected beehive, you can then move on to a little bit something else, like trying to get the ingredients for this. I was talking about getting some of the, uh, the pelts for this. Well, that involves a little bit of hunting, or perhaps if you're not really up for hunting, you can do some trapping. Because these guys here, wolves, are going to be one of your greatest foes, that and bears early on. Because if you run into them, you're probably going to just want to run away. Your safest bet is to get in some get into some deeper water. Uh, single block water is not the best choice because they will move about the same speed as you, maybe even faster. But if you go into two block water, you can swim faster than most other creatures. So this gives you a distinct advantage to outmaneuver them. That or kind of weaving through small areas that uh, these larger creatures might not be able to get to. Now that aside, you will have some passive or slightly less aggressive creatures that you can then harvest for your materials. You notice down here, I've got a slew of these little critters running around. It's because uh, I'm in survival right now. They're very afraid of me, but they all came here by themselves. I didn't put any of these guys in here. The reason being is because I made a trap. Uh, basically, I built this little pit trap. It's just two blocks deep. This is just an example. Feel free to use what you like. Some people will actually build pit traps around their entire farming area so that they can then gather all the creatures. Now, each one will uh, bring along different kinds of results. Now, in this case, I've got rabbits, raccoons, and foxes. Now, rabbits and raccoons are pretty much passive creatures that will just run away from you, and you can uh, harvest them if you can catch them and, and kill them. But the foxes, if you hurt them, they will attack back. Uh, it's not going to be too damaging, but they can kill you if you aren't, uh, you know, too careful. Now, how do you draw these creatures around? You notice here I have this little center platform here with some, uh, it doesn't matter what it is. In this case, I've got flax seeds growing. If you have some kind of seed uh, on a farmland, and this just happens to be moist farmland, but you just need to make yourself a hoe, which is something that it, you can just... Uh, you know, shift click a nappable stone on the ground, make a head, slap it on a stick, and then just right click on the dirt and you'll make yourself some farmland. It's pretty much that simple. And you can then place any seeds that you find from different uh, plants out in the world that you've harvested or have found in loot containers and place them down here. That will draw in rabbits because rabbits are drawn to your crops. We also have here a blueberry bush. It doesn't have to be blueberries, but any of the berry bush types, if you find them in the world, you can harvest them, put them down, and eventually they may flower and then come to ripen into berries. With this, you will draw in the occasional raccoon, depending upon your climate, but they will also come into this area. As you notice, there's one little guy down here that, that started running around. You might not find them if you're in a more deserty area because that's just not part of their biome that they usually generate in. 
So this is just an example of a really quick and easy trap for getting rabbits and raccoons, which will pretty much yield you small uh, bits of hide, which you can then turn into pelts. But they have different drops besides that. Rabbits will also drop raw red meat on occasion, whereas raccoons will drop raw bush meat. The difference with this is that bush meat takes a long time to actually cook into cooked bush meat. And it only gives you about 120 saturation. That's about 1.2 of these little blips here on the right, something along those lines. Whereas cooked red meat gets you 280 saturation, which is going to be about 2.8 of these blips of, of, over here when you cook that in a campfire. And it's just going to be better in a general sense. Uh, it doesn't use as much fuel to cook that uh, red meat instead of the bush meat. Um, the Biggest difference with these is that bush meat cannot be used in cooking recipes. It's just cooked by itself or cured by itself, whereas red meat can be used in multiple different cooking recipes later on. Plus, it can also be cooked and cured similar to bush meat. I've talked about these two guys, but I haven't talked about the fox. This is also a bush meat carrier. Also, a possibility for getting small hides as well as, uh, you know, fat and, and other drops. But... It will follow where the rabbits and chickens go. Now, chickens aren't really going to be, you know, drawn into these two types of things. That's something else entirely. But the foxes, if they find rabbits nearby, will likely come into that area. I do find it beneficial on occasion to trap a fox in our garden area if it's not particularly well defended, if rabbits are appearing in there somehow, and just leaving the fox alone, and it will eventually take care of the rabbits for you thus protecting your crops at the same time. But otherwise, you can always use it to prey upon them and get their drops so that you can get your early gear. So quite possibly the biggest benefit that I could say that you would get from pelts isn't just going to be the wooden lamellae armor. It would also be these hunter backpacks. If you look here, I've got three of them equipped and my original hand basket. Now, hand baskets will store about three items. If you look here, it says storage slots, three currently says it's empty. If I put something in here, the first three slots here, it will say it currently stores a fur coat. It's a nice little tool tip, so if you are trying to replace these, you know what is exactly in there so that you don't worry about dropping it on the ground or something. But not to worry, you can always take these hand baskets out, then you combine them with a flint knife, and you can get yourself some cattails back. Oh no, I broke it up. I've just lost three inventory spaces. No, you didn't, because now you have access to cattails with pelts. Combine that together, you get yourself a hunter backpack. Now I've got more here than what I need. I just needed three of each and one of those pelts, and I get myself a four slot backpack. So that's a really nice way of doing it, provided that you don't mind waiting a couple days for your hides to cure into pelts, and that you have enough to do so. If you don't have a lot of animals in the area, well, that might be a little bit of a slowing factor, but still, if you just do something along the lines of this, you're guaranteed to get some rabbits, provided that you're not right next to them to scare the rabbits away from falling into the pits. And yes, I've got some ladders on the sides just so that I can get back up should I fall down in here or if I want to. Um, you can always stab down from above or just chase them into the corner and throw things at them. Now this is just a very easy and relatively passive way to get some simple pelts. In the future, I'll go over a little bit more advanced hunting tactics, but one way of avoiding being attacked by things like wolves and bears is to get yourself a bunch of dirt, pillar up on it so that you're going straight up, and try to stay out of reach of these creatures while you pelt them with different ranged uh, weaponry uh, until they run away or you run out of ammunition and decide to start making a run for it. Otherwise, book it for the nearest water source. If you're near a forest, then you're near wolves. So keep that in mind. And you're also quite possibly near some bears as well, but bears do kind of vary in their terrain a little bit more. So if you decide I'm going to go way over here into this area because I see something of interest, be aware that this is all wolf territory. You're probably gonna to wanna to stay into more clear, spacious areas that are shrubby, sandy, or very sparse. Just by clearing the woods will not prevent wolves and bears from spawning again. Once they start spawning in an area, they will spawn there for the rest of your game time. But again, you can use that to your advantage by creating different traps or pillaring up to defeat them from a distance. Now enough about that, there's one last thing. How do you defend yourself against the forces of nature 
namely cold. You probably have noticed I've got a few key items in my inventory. Fur coat, fur gloves, and knee-high fur boots. The recipe for these all involve different levels of pelts. Now you can craft them in multiple different ways, whether it be with a knife or shears that you know you've probably gotten once you've gone into the metalworking stage. And also the size of the pelts will make a big difference on how many are required. So if you're going to do small ones, obviously you'll need four to make some knee-high fur boots. This is medium, will take two, or you just need a large one with a knife and you can make one. Either way, you just need a knife or shears for any of these crafting recipes for this example. Now if I bring up something like this, and you can see we've got a fur coat. It does require a lot more pelts, but it also gives a good condition, or when in good condition, it will give you an extra 4% C. What does this mean? Max warmth, 4, 4 degrees. This is basically telling you that when it is currently 0 degrees outside, you will start freezing and your body temperature will start going down. When it goes down too low, you'll start taking freezing damage. The edges of your screen will start frosting over and you'll definitely know. You won't have too much time before you will perish from the cold. You can warm yourself with different heat sources like campfires and the like. Torches will not cut it. You might be able to maintain your body temperature by keeping at a fast pace a little bit better than if you were holding still, but that's definitely not going to stop you from freezing to death. And how do coats and this temperature work? It's more or less going to give you a bigger buffer. So if it is currently minus one degrees outside, then you are going to freeze to death eventually without proper protection. But if you look at your clothes that you might start with, in this case I'm wearing a commoner's set of clothing, and it is tattered or heavily tattered or just in different variable states. This means that if it is anything below the good, it is not giving its maximum heat percentage. Basically, uh, your stuff is pretty much just getting like kind of worn through. Your, your outfit is just not as insulated as it once was. And you can repair those with flax fibers. Now you can find these in loot chests. You can find this by harvesting flax in the world uh, as well as multiple other sources. But if you find these flax, you're going to want to keep them and craft them up straight away because flax fibers by themselves are not useful for anything. But if you put them in a crafting grid, you can make yourself flax twine. So I'm going to take the 20 that I have and make a bunch of flax twine. This can be used in multiple ways, one of which is two of them will get you two clean bandages. So that is a, another way of getting yourself healed up, which can be really useful in a pinch, though it is, in my experience, a little bit more expensive, though it's a lot easier to renew than the poultices. On top of that, you could take four of them and create yourself some linen. Now, either one of these, flax, twine, or linen, can be used to repair your clothing. And if you look, fur coats, fur gloves, and knee-high fur boots, giving a total maximum of 8.5 Celsius means that you can go down as low as 8 below before you start dropping your body temperature and start to freeze. So this is going to give you a bigger buffer. If your winters never actually get that cold, then a fur coat is pretty much going to keep you set. Alternately, you can always stay near warm areas or go deeper underground to avoid the frost layer. But you can repair your clothing or your fur coats. In this case, I'm trying to put it on. It has to go into certain slots of your inventory, so it may replace these ones that I currently have. Now remember, it was giving me a total maximum of about 8.5 before. If I look up these commoner items, maximum on the commoner coat is 2 degrees. On the gloves, it's 0.5, and on the boots, it's 1. That's only going to be a total of 3.5, so it's not going to give you as good of insulation as the fur outfit. Now, you could take off all these other clothes as well, but honestly, the more clothes you have in good condition, the better off you're going to be. So you're going to want to keep those on and try and boost your own insulating layers as high as you can get them. So how do you do that? You can either take flax twine or linen and just right click it on the item. Now in this case, this is good condition. I'm not really going to bother with that. Once it gets to good condition or its maximum warmth, per warmth percentage, I'm just going to leave it there and just re repair it as I need to. You can repair it so that it's in perfect condition if you really want to. 
but then that's and it will last a lot longer but then that does require a lot more materials in this case i've got some tattered and some heavily tattered clothing let's take this one flax twine on this tattered shirt and you can see it went to heavily worn 37 percent and it now does 1.5 degrees if i take this linen over here on something like a heavily tattered commoner's trousers it then repairs it all the way up to a good percentage. So it, it does make repairing a lot faster and easier if you just use those linen, but it then also means that you're using a lot more resources. So if you just need a little bit of a push, then you go with the twine. If you're looking to like get things up much faster, you can use the linen as well. With those in place, you now have a little bit better of fortification. And keep in mind, not everything is going to give you a bonus. <laughs> in this case, my straw hat has no insulating value whatsoever. So in total, with all of these items here, I now have a 12 degree extra protection layer so that I can stay out much longer in the frozen wilds, or at least just during winter. And if you look on the back, just a little extra thing, when you upgrade your backpack from the hand baskets, you can now see that you have hunter backpacks on your person. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and as always, come visit us on Twitch. We stream there regularly, including streams for Vintage Story. And no, it's not Minecraft. It's a game by itself. Till next time, folks. I'll see ya.